Hi, in this lesson we'll consider separable differential equations. Let's consider a differential equation of the first order, that is, an equation that depends on x. The desired function y and its first derivative y dash is equal to zero. Let's remember that we could denote the derivative of y dash as dy by dx. We have used such a notation, but it can be clearly proved that this expression behaves like an ordinary fraction, with the numerator dy, the denominator dx. So, if we have an equation and we do such an expression instead of y dash, then we can rewrite this equation in the following form. Some function p of xy times dx plus some function q of xy dy is equal to zero. If we rewrite the differential equation of the first order in this form, then we can say that this is a first order differential equation, given in differential form. So this is a differential form. Or vice versa. If we have an equation in differential form, then we can rewrite it in the usual form. To do this, we need to rearrange it in such a way that dy divided by dx, in particular, we can divide everything by dx. For example, express y dash. Then we can say that we have rearranged it from the differential form to the usual one. The simplest equation in differential form is the following one. p of x dx plus q of y dy is equal to zero. That is such an equation where dx is preceded by a function that depends only on x and dy is preceded by a function that depends only on y. An equation of this kind is called a differential equation with separated variables. It means that variables x and y are already separated from each other. In order to solve such an equation, we just need to integrate it completely. Take the integral on the left, take the integral on the right. If we calculate this integral, then we get some constant here. We get a constant here. And the integral of zero gives us some constant as well. Then we can move all these constants to the right and write them down as some one constant. Then we get the following. The integral p of x dx plus the integral q of y dy is equal to c. This is a general solution for an equation with separated variables, or the integral of this equation. If we have the opportunity to express y from here, then we do so. If not, then we leave the equation in an implicit form. For example, let's say we have the following separable differential equation. Let's say x squared plus 3x minus 1 dx plus e of y dy is equal to zero. In order to solve this equation, we take the integral on the left and on the right. The integral of x squared plus 3x minus 1 is the integral of x squared is x cubed by 3. The integral of 3x is 3x squared in half. The integral of minus 1 is minus x. The integral of e to the power of y is e to the power of y. And all of this is equal to the constant c. This is the general solution, or integral, for this equation. We can express y from here as follows. First we express e of y. e of y is equal to c, minus all of that. Minus x cubed by 3. 3x squared in half plus x. And now we need to take the natural logarithm on the left and on the right. We get that y is equal to ln from this expression. We've got a general solution to the original equation. But in general, we could leave the solution in this form. Let's consider the differential equation of the following form. Some function m1 of x multiplied by a function n1 of y dx plus some function m2 of x and 2 of y dy is equal to zero. That is, there are products of two functions before dx and dy. Each product separately depends on its variable, on x and on y. Such an equation is called an equation with separable variables. 
As you might remember, we have considered an equation with separated variables before, so we can reduce an equation with separable variables to an equation with separated variables. In order to make this, we need, with the help of various transformations, make it so that there is only a function of x before dx and only of y before dy. Obviously, we need to divide by n1 and m2. That is, we divide all of that by a function n1 of x and 1 of y, and also divided by a function m2 of x. That is, we divide by their product. What will we get then? If we divide the first expression, n1 is reduced. There is m1 divided by m2, m1 of x by m2 of x dx, plus here we get n2 of y divided by n1 of y dy is equal to zero. Thus, we've got an equation with already separated variables. dx is preceded by a function that depends only on x, and dy is preceded by a function that depends only on y. And we already know how to solve such equations. Just take the integral. The only thing worth noting, we can only divide by something that doesn't equal to zero. Thus, we divide it. The assumption is that these functions are not equal to zero, but we must separately consider the case when n1 of y is equal to 0. And consider the case when m2 of x is equal to 0. Some examples of the original equation can also be obtained from here. Let's consider examples. We have this equation in a differential form. Let's try to solve it. To do this, we first do the following. We can take out x here. We get x, 1 plus y, y plus. We take out y here we get 1 minus x dx is equal to 0. We've done some transformations. Now we see that this is an equation with separable variables. There are the products of separate functions before dx and before dy, of y and of x. So we can reduce it to a separated variable equation. To do this, we need to divide it by the following. There should be only y before dy, so we divide it by x. There should be only x before dx, so we divide it by y. That is, we divide it by the product of x and y, and we know that this is not equal to zero. What do we get? 1 plus y multiplied by x divided by xy. X's cancel out. There's only 1 plus y divided by y. Or we do as follows. 1 divided by y, we get 1 by y. And y divided by y, we get 1. y plus. Similarly here, the y's cancel out. 1 minus x divided by x, term by term. 1 divided by x, 1 by x, minus x by x, minus 1, dx, is equal to 0. So, we've got a separated variable equation. Now we just take the integral. Integrating this expression, the integral of 1 by y is ln modulus y. The integral of 1 by y is y, plus the integral of 1 by x. This is ln modulo x minus 1, so it's minus x, is equal to integral of 0 is the constant c. So, we can leave it in this form or transform it. Let's choose the second option. Namely, do the following. ln y plus ln x, the sum of logarithms is the logarithm of the product of yx, and we represent y minus x as ln. e to the power of y minus x is equal to c. Now, if we sum these logarithms again, then we get the logarithm of the product. That is, we get ln yx multiplied by e to the power of y minus x is equal to c. But since c is an arbitrary constant, we can represent it as logarithm of some arbitrary constant. We can represent it in this form because c is an arbitrary constant, that is, some arbitrary number. But ln c, depending on c, can also be an arbitrary number. Therefore, it's convenient to take c in this form. And we get the solution from here. Namely, x, y, e to the power of y minus x is equal to c. This is the integral of the original equation. But don't forget that we need to separately consider cases when x is equal to 0 and when y is equal to 0. What do we get if x is 0? Substitute here 
x is 0, 0, this expression is 0. Here is dx, this is also 0, thus 0 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 0 is also a solution. Now let's consider the case when y is equal to 0. Likewise, it's 0 and it's 0. That is, y is equal to 0 is also a solution. So we have this solution and these two. But note that if we take the constant c is equal to 0, then we will get the solutions x equal to 0 and y equal to 0 from here. So this expression covers these two solutions. Thus, this is the general solution of the original differential equation. Let's consider the second example. Here we have an equation not in differential form. Let's write it in differential form. In order to do this, we put dy dx instead of y dash. What will we get? x dy by dx is equal to y squared plus 1. Multiply by dx and move everything to one side. We get x dy is equal to y squared plus 1x dx. If we move it to the left, then there is minus is equal to 0. This is an equation with separable variables. There should be only one y before y. So we divide it by x. And we divide it by y squared plus 1. That is, we divide by x. y squared plus 1. Not equal to 0. Then we get dy divided by 1 plus y squared minus dx divided by x is equal to 0. Let's integrate. An integral of this kind is the arc tangent. That is, the arc tangent y minus an integral of this kind is ln minus ln x is equal to c. We can express y from here or leave it in this form. This is the solution to this equation. But don't forget the cases when x is equal to 0 and this expression is equal to 0. Let's see. x is 0, we get 0 on the left and on the right. y squared plus 1 is 0. That is, it turns out that y squared is 1. This is impossible. So x is equal to 0 is not a solution. But y squared plus 1 cannot be equal to 0. So this case is not considered. This expression is the solution to the general solution of this original equation. This video lesson is over.